naturally with the football being such a big part of my life, it was really hard for me to, to let it go when I was done playing. When I was even in college, my senior year during the spring, I decided to come back and help with the football practices. I was no longer playing, I wasn't on the team, but I was still practicing with the team because I just loved the game and I wanted to be a part of, part of my life at all times. So when I graduated and went to Teach for America, the students at my school didn't have a football program. They had a basketball team and that was it. And when they found out I played football, they naturally wanted me to help coach them. With the help of YPI, the Youth Policy Institute, we were able to join a league and start getting practices going and started to get a little season going. And it was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. It gave me the opportunity to work with my students in a capacity that I had never worked with them before. It allowed me to develop relationships and bonds that they are, they are you could create them in the classroom, but not with the ease and simplicity that you do on the field. These bonds are, are, are the strongest bonds I've had. When I think about my students, the ones that will never leave me when I'm 80 years old thinking back at my life, I definitely know I'll think about Angel and Edgar and, and all the other kids that I worked with. It was a beautiful experience. It was so much fun. And my favorite part was that my, my teammates, two of my teammates from my undergrad came out and helped me. Brian Opritza and Russell Oka, they were both living in LA and they both were doing their thing. Oka was getting his master's degree and Brian was working in media and they were able to find 10 hours a week to come help me coach and help teach these students discipline, how to work hard, teach these students things that, that you really learn and you develop through football and it translates into any other avenue of your life, whether it be schoolwork, whether it be socially, whether it be with your family or your religion at church, all these different things that you develop out in the football field, you could carry over. And it was a great experience. The, the amount of, of satisfaction that I derive from being able to spend my time with these students, playing the game I love, coaching, getting my hands a little dirty every now and then, and, and joining in and running plays with them. It was, it was truly a pleasure. Um, did you have grade requirements when you played? Oh, grade requirements. My students, my students that played on my football team, they understood that they were student athletes. They were not athlete students, and at the end of the day, the most important thing was for them to get good grades. I had great checks, we had mandatory study hall. For every hour of practice, we had at least that same amount of time of tutoring. There was no way that they'd be getting missing assignments and Fs if they're gonna be on my football team. If you are on a football team, you represent not just yourself, but you also represent your school. And if you're representing your school, you gotta represent not just the team and the football, but you gotta represent the academics and the good character. It wasn't just about grades, it wasn't just about football, it was also character. When students were getting in trouble and their teachers told me, I definitely made them know that it wasn't okay. They had, to, they, had a, they had a punishment, and if it was severe, they'd have to sit during a game because I morally could not play a student that didn't show the proper morals in the classroom. It's a very, very, football is a very beautiful sport because the, the nature of it requires so much discipline, snap counts, everybody on the same page, making the right assignments. It's a, it's a game of logistics. If everyone isn't doing the right thing at the right time, everything will fall apart. And, that, that model, that idea is the same in terms of a football player's life. You can't just be good at one thing, you can't just have one thing done, it has to all be there. Your academics, your behavior, your family, your sports, your teammates, you have to be a well-rounded citizen and a student and an athlete in order for you to be able to be a successful player, at least on my team. But I'd like to think that a lot more coaches out there are also employing these same ideas. I know that the coaches that I had the privilege and, and luxury to work with they all demanded everything very high out of us. There was no way we were getting on the field if we had less than a 2.0. There's no way we were going to get on the field if we had some discipline issues. It was all about being a great member of your school, your society, and representing your family, your friends, your teammates, and your school to the best of your ability. What do you want to do next? The next step. This next step has been one of the hardest things for me to think of because there's so many things in this world that I want to contribute to. I know that this education system is going to be really hard for me to pull myself away, but Growing up and seeing my dad and seeing him work with patients and, and watching his career develop as he started off as a general hospital practitioner to owning his own private practice and being a very strong leading physician in Bakersfield, it's really something that I want to chase too. That's a dream that I saw realized with my own two eyes and it's a dream that I want to be able to, to attack, approach and accomplish myself. So I'm planning on studying for the MCATs taking the test and seeing where I go exactly in medicine. I attracted to a lot of different avenues in medicine and I really don't think I'd be able to say where exactly I'll end up until I go through med school and I experience it, but things that are screaming 
this will be awesome. Include orthopedic surgery. I would love to continue working with football players and athletes. I myself have had a few surgeries and I know exactly what it means to, to be off the field and on the sidelines and longing to be there with your friends, working together, playing together, having fun. I know that feeling, I know how, how hard it is, but I also know how important it is to make sure that the athletes are completely ready. The athletes are physically and mentally ready to get back in the game because if you clear them too soon, the damage could be more detrimental and they could find their careers over. They could find their lives inhibited and impaired because of an injury that they sustained on the field. So I completely understand all of the, the aspects that go into it. I just don't know how to do the surgeries yet. That's the point of med school. So that's, that's a big part of what I want to do. I also think working in pediatrics would be really neat. I currently teach seventh grade students and I love these kids. These kids have so much personality, they have so much energy, so much life and so much future. And to be able to help, help continue their futures, help protect those futures because they're not getting sick and they're not falling ill to simple, simple, compatible diseases or disorders would be very, very rewarding because I can't, I can't stress enough how unfair not just the education system is with the education that these kids are getting, but the social system within medicine. I have students that don't get the proper health care because either family issues, insurance issues, or just the, the issues that come with the socioeconomic class status that, that is not quite offered to everybody. My roommate, he teaches seventh grade and he has a student that has this I I'm not exactly sure of the nature of it, but they need to seven thousand dollars because the student's family can't afford the health procedure, and if he doesn't get it, the student will get blind, and that's not fair. Why is it that the student can't afford this procedure, where, where I with my father and what he did, if I had this issue, it would have been resolved immediately, and and these disparities and. This, these differences in, in lifestyle is something that I would like to help play a role in. The medical field needs just as much change as the education system because it's not fair. I don't think that a kid should ever be untreated. It's not a kid's responsibility to get insurance. It's not a kid's fault if they don't have insurance. So a kid should not suffer the penalty and the price for having something naturally come down. Um, yeah. So do you want to ask him your, your question? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want him to stay at the same spot? Stay at the same spot, it's fine. Okay. Uh, what were your first impressions of Blaze Winter? Blaze Winter, man, that guy's intense. I, I shook his hand and I had to like massage my fingers when I was done. It was a, it was a very firm grip, it looked me straight in the eyes as if my head wasn't even there, right through me. And I just knew that this man was the real deal. Blaze Winters was one of the most fun and exciting parts about football camp at Pona Pitzer. He came in and gave not just the drills and the, the tools for success, but he closely watched our practice and gave us each individual feedback, each individual critique that helped us elevate our games and make us better players. The week that he spent with us each year were some of the best football development that I experienced. I became a better athlete. I became a better football player. I became, I feel like, a better person hearing his story, hearing all the, the, the struggles that he had to overcome. And through, he, he had to overcome insurmountable odds. He had, he's just a real inspiration.